Hi everyone, it's time to learn macroeconomics again.、Uh, we are going to finish chapter A, an equilibrium business cycle model. For the second part of this chapter, we are going to learn how to use equilibrium business cycle model to explain the stylized facts of business cycles, and then we are going to learn substitution effect, especially its、uh, role on labor supply decision. We start from equilibrium business cycle model. And how to apply it to understand the business cycle. One major reason that drive business cycle drive thing up and down is because something happened that suddenly make、uh, the firm owner, the boss, want to pay more for its labor input and capital input. In this case, when this thing happens, and、uh, labor demand and capital demand will increase, at the same time output will increase as well. But what does that mean when a boss say that he would like to pay more for his labor and capital inputs? We know that it would be translated into the scenario that he must think that this input can help him make more money now, and making more money actually imply that their productivity are higher now. Here, the productivity actually refer to the marginal productivity of both inputs. Remember. KD and LD both demand curve represent marginal productivity. So don't forget about that. Whenever this, whenever this two curve move, it's usually, it's not usually, it's always about the marginal productivity of the input has increased. Then what can increase the marginal productivity of、uh, inputs? The first、uh, reason could be technological progress. Suddenly, there's new te technology make both input become more productive, or maybe the weather is extremely good so that farmer suddenly can harvest more now, or the oil price drop, which actually make the firm become more productive, or there is a better law system so that the corruption cost has decreased, therefore firm can make better profit now, or there will be some free trade agreement. And has been done between two country. Therefore, the firm's export cost decrease since the tariff he has to pay before now disappear. So we start from、uh, understanding the capital rental market. When the, those things happen, that increase the capital demand. It will increase the real rental price of capital. Therefore, we will see that when output increase. The real rental price of capital also increases as well, which means that our model we predict these two variable: the real rental price, real rental price of capital, and also the output to move together in the same direction, which would imply that the real rental price of capital is procyclical, which is exactly the same as the picture that we saw before. And then we move to the labor market. When those good things happen, that will drive up the labor demand. It is implied that equilibrium wage and labor input will increase as well. Therefore, we will see that、uh, both variable will increase together with the increase of output. It means that we will observe that real wage rate in an economy will be procyclical, and also the employment of an economy will be procyclical as well. And when those good things happen, it would automatically increase households'、uh, income source. So from two piles of cash to three piles. The first effect of this increase of wealth immediately make consumers become happier. Therefore, it create a wealth effect, making the household to decide to consume more today. Therefore. We will observe consumption to go up with the increase of GDP as well. It's implied that consumption would be procyclical in our scenario. And to move on to investment, to facilitate our discussion, we assume that the price level P is equal to one, so we don't have to write it at all. Then nominal GDP represent real GDP as well. So、uh, for this one extra pile cash increase in the income source, 
we know that it will increase the consumption today. But normally, consumption will not increase as much as the increase of income is only increased a little bit. Why is only increased a little bit? If we see con income increase by one unit, consumption increase a little bit, that is because that we are talking about business cycle. So those good news that drive up input demand are temporary. Therefore, consumption, uh, the consumer will know that such income increase is not a permanent thing. Therefore, under consumption smoothing preference, when the household face a temporary income change, he will not increase consumption as much as income. That's why consumption increase less than the income increase. And remember that income in an economy represents real GDP, and it can be used for consumption or investment. Therefore, when the increase of income, which represents increase of real GDP, it must be equal to the increase of G its consumption, plus the remaining part will be used for increment of investment today. Therefore, if real GDP increased by one pile of cash, but consumption only increased not less than one pile, then it must mean that part of the increment of output has been saved and reinvest in the economy. Therefore, we will see that when the real GDP increase, investment will increase. Always remember that the scenario behind this increase of investment is due to the fact that consumption does not increase as much as the increment of real GDP. Therefore, we are able to observe the cyclical pattern of investment in an economy. And furthermore, when we talk about business cycle, even though it is temporary, but usually such good news will last for a while. So it will be persistent for a while. Which means that if we look at future, then the future capital rental market, this good news still there. And then it means that future capital demand will still be high, which means that the real rental price for future capital would still be high as well. This would create an extra effect on today's consumption, since we know that uh, there is an intertemporal substitution decision that the household has to make, which means that one basket of consumption today can be translated into real rental price plus one minus delta units of consumption tomorrow. If we know that tomorrow's uh, real rental price is going to be higher, due to this uh, good shock that persists, then it will create an incentive for the household want to decrease its consumption further so that he can increase his tomorrow's consumption more. This is called intertemporal substitution effect. What does that mean? In our previous equality, we already know that real GDP increment will be divided into the increment of consumption today and the increment of investment today. With this intertemporal substitution effect, it would decrease today's consumption further, at the same time increase today's in investment further. Therefore, this effect would, together with consumption smoothing, it already imply that it, during business cycle, whenever there's a good news that increase the real GDP, consumption will increase very little so that most increment will be absorbed by investment. That's why we will see that during business cycle, investment is more volatile than consumption. Now we are going to talk about labor supply. In this part, we are going to learn substitution effect as well. To derive labor supply curve, we consider the case that today's real wage rate suddenly increased. Then what would it affect households' uh, uh, working decision? First of all, when your wage rate increases, you would feel happy immediately. When you feel happy, it would create wealth effect. Then uh, usually it makes you want to consume more. At the same time, it also makes you want to take more leisure time which means that 
you are going to work less hours. So this is the wealth effect that a wage rate increase will create first. But other than that, when the household see the wage rate increase, he would ask himself, how much consumption can I get out of hard working? The answer to that question is that we know that the real wage rate is actually equal to the units or basket of consumption that he can get out of working. So the answer to that one is simply uh, the real wage rate today. So if real wage rate today increase, he would immediately know that one extra unit of consumption, uh, no, one extra unit of labor can get him one W over P extra units of uh, consumption today. So therefore, when he weighing the decision between today's uh, leisure time and uh, today's consumption, then he is thinking about certain kind of uh, uh, substitution decision. He will immediately think that if today's working can give me more uh, today's consumption, then I should uh, consume more today and rest less today so that he can work more today. Therefore, here he substitute today's leisure means that he increased today's working hour, substitute the leisure with more consumption. This is called substitution effect. So when today's wage rate increase, it will create a substitution effect that makes the household want to work more and consume more today. So this is second effect that today's wage rate increase would create on labor decision. And there's another uh, effect it would create because the household might ask this kind of question. Should I work harder today so that I can work less tomorrow? Because if the household is going to work one more hour, he can choose to work one more hour either today or work one more hour either tomorrow. So what's the pros and cons for uh, working today versus working tomorrow? We know that working would give the household the benefit of real wage rate. So when you are weighing working today versus working tomorrow, basically you will compare the real wage rate today versus the real wage rate tomorrow. But when you compare the wage rate tomorrow with today's wage rate, tomorrow's wage rate has to be its present, present value. It has to be discounted. What I mean is that on the seesaw, left hand side is the wage rate that you are going to get for working today. On the right hand side is the wage rate you are going to get tomorrow. But this comparison is not accurate because tomorrow's uh, wage rate is not present value yet. You have to discount it by dividing it with one plus i. And now we uh, think about what happened if today's wage rate increase. In this case, the seesaw would tilt it toward today's uh, working. Therefore, if you are going to work one more hour, you would prefer to work one more hour today instead of tomorrow. Which means that what you should do is that if today's wage rate increase, you must well work less out tomorrow and increase your workout today. In this way, you actually earn more money uh, in terms of present value. Okay? So here, we would have the effect that is called intertemporal substitution effect, since here we are talking about the decision across two different time points. And this intertemporal substitution effect from the wage increase today would increase today's working hours. So together we have three different effects that are created by today's wage rate increase. Today's wage rate increase would decrease working intention through wealth effect. Today's wage rate increase would increase your working hour through substitution effect and intertemporal substitution effect as well. So now if we try to look at the graph Suppose initially we have one point 
uh, the gray point represent the working out decision based on the uh, certain uh, real wage rate basket numbers. Now, if the real wage rate uh, increases, then uh, how would be the new uh, working out decision now? Will it move rightward, which means increase, or it would move leftward, which means it decreases? It really depends <clears throat> because we have three different effects. The first scenario is that wealth effect dominates. If wealth effect is so strong, then when the wage rate increase, he will feel extremely happy from the wealth increase. In this case, he would choose to decrease his labor supplied unit. Therefore, we would get a labor supply curve that is actually negative slope. On the other hand, with this real wage rate increase, if substitution effects plus intertemporal substitution effect both together dominates, then we will see that this household's uh, working decision would be to increase its labor supply unit. Therefore, we will see a labor supply curve that is positive sloped. So up to this point, we learned that if we withdraw a positive slope labor supply curve, we always have to bear in mind it will imply that for this household or for the economy, we are assuming substitution effect together with intertemporal substitution effect actually dominate wealth effect. It is because of this um, assumption or actually is an observation from data that we are able to draw a positive labor supply curve. With this positive labor supply curve, then we are able to observe that when there is a good shock that increased firm's labor demand, at the same time increase uh, output, we will see the equilibrium wage rate and uh, employment level would increase at the same time, so that we will be able to uh, explain why real wage rate and the employment are procyclical. If the labor supply curve is not positive slope, we won't be able to explain the data pattern that we observe. 